Welcome back to the Gnome Show, everyone. I am Josh, your humble and very sick host. And it is my duty, nay, my pleasure, to troll the briny depths of YouTube so that I may bring you the shinies. I cover short films of varying genres, video games, analog horror, and sci-fi, and really anything else that I think I find is groovy. I hope you'll enjoy tonight's offerings, content for the blood god. Now on with the show, I come to that one. Welcome, ladies and gents. Uh, tonight we have uh, Anomaly um, with uh, They Found Something Underground, the director's cut. Let's put a In 1989, the Socialist Republic of Romania was living its last hours under the dictatorship of Nicolae Ceausescu. During this intense period of socio-political crisis, internal government dissidents, along with a large group of intellectuals and scientists, decided to intervene in a matter that had been suspected for years. The State Security Department, behind Ceausescu's back, had been working since 1985 on investigating some clandestine Moscow's facilities east of the Romanian city of Bacau. It was suspected that these facilities could have been used later by Ceausescu's supporters to promote a future coup. Amidst the crisis during the summer of 1989, a specialized military scientific team was formed in dissent with the goal of finding and dismantling these facilities. After three arduous weeks of work, and just as the National Espionage Service had long suspected, in August of that year, they found a cabin in the middle of the forest that matched all the previously studied characteristics. Those Moscow facilities were an undeniable reality. The scientific team determined after the initial assessments that beneath the cabin lay an intricate network of tunnels, some of which were believed to connect with bunkers in Ukraine and continue for miles along narrow paths towards the heart of the Soviet Union. In the fourth week of August, the cabin was secured, with the perimeter and all areas of interest around it being secured as well. On September 7, a military convoy departed from the capital, Bucharest, heading to the Bacau forests to commence the intervention with utmost urgency, while avoiding any media uproar. A heavily armed contingent accompanied a group of scientists, whose mission was to photograph as many objects, scenes, and structures as possible for study in the capital within a few hours. Additionally, the military team ensured the area was cleared of any potential dangers, such as landmines or explosive traps, as well as any devices used for espionage. The following photographs show the initial images of the entrance to the hole found inside the cabin which was thoroughly studied and dismantled by the night of September 7. The first section of the hole was approximately 130 feet deep. Although descent equipment was initially required, the investigators soon discovered a long ladder that seemed to support the group's weight. Upon reaching the bottom of the shaft, the investigators found a rocky and excessively damp tunnel extending eastward for about 1640 feet. As they ventured deeper underground, the tunnel seemed to widen, revealing the first signs of human technological intervention. Everything indicated they were on the right path. At 1420 feet, the cavern had completely transformed into a tunnel characteristic of the bunkers of that era. The scientists reported in their field notes a dangerous sulfur smell that began to permeate the air. However, they couldn't determine the source of this peculiar odor as it dissipated after a few minutes without any way to verify its origin. After several minutes of walking, they encountered an abrupt end a single, heavily reinforced metal door. Despite blocking the path with an extremely hard and solid structure, the door showed significant signs of corrosion and rust from the tunnel's humidity. The locksmith team took approximately one hour and 20 minutes to breach the door. An initial study yielded inconclusive results regarding the origin and composition of the black mass that seemed to harden the metal 
encasing it in irregular patterns different from natural corrosion and rust. Once the team of scientists passed through the door, they found themselves in a very spacious room with large pillars and a ceiling that easily reached 33 feet in height. Exploring this large room took around 75 minutes, during which the following photographs were taken. Same kind of shit you would find in the stalker games too. The areas were visibly deteriorated, and the facility seemed to have been abandoned for longer than initially estimated. The black substance that was under study was present on most of the walls and floor. It did not appear to be toxic or dangerous upon direct skin contact. Despite the team staying alert and using appropriate equipment, an accident caused one team member to touch it directly with his hands. Fortunately, he did not suffer any negative consequences during the exploration. The team continued examining the area and decided to descend a staircase leading five floors below the main hall to a depth of 300 feet. During the examination, they noticed that the steps leading to the adjacent hallways were slowly being absorbed by the black substance but at a rate visible to the naked eye. Oh, shit. Additionally, high-quality photographs were taken through several windows that allowed views behind cabinets rusted and petrified by fungi and humidity. After descending several meters from the surface, the team set up on what seemed to be the deepest floor of the so-called first main zone. They pitched tents, deployed instruments for sample analysis, and established a base for assembling a remote-controlled robot to be used later. While the tents were being set up, an independent patrol began exploring the dozens of adjacent rooms surrounding the main zone. These showed clear signs of having been large offices and computerized research laboratories. Some documents were found stacked in storage rooms, but unfortunately, their condition was deplorable. Covered in mold, mud, and the black substance still under study. This rendered any attempt to decipher the contents of these documents futile. Up until then, the place seemed to have been abruptly abandoned. All signs pointed to a forced abandonment, raising new questions and altering the initial research direction. The team decided to use the two exploration robots they had brought with them to investigate what appeared to be sewer tunnels. The goal was to remotely explore other more distant and difficult to access areas as time was not unlimited. Forcing doors and draining the locksmith's generators was completely impractical. After three hours of exploration, the research team navigated through the office rooms to a notably flooded sector, filled with rooms that seemed to contain organic waste and other undetermined aqueous materials. Scientists reported a strong smell of burnt plastic and other volatile organic compounds. Exposure to the environment caused some fatigue, dizziness, and nausea, but oddly these symptoms only lasted a couple of minutes before disappearing as quickly as they had appeared. When investigators began sampling the soil, they found lumps that were considerably denser than they appeared, all covered with the black substance. While one group of scientists continued analyzing samples from the adjacent rooms, another was tasked with exploring the southeast wing, designated as the machinery zone. There too, everything was flooded, but unlike the other rooms, they found bodies that seemed to have anthropomorphic features. All were petrified in strange postures and covered with the same dark substance, but with a greasy texture similar to oil. In these same rooms, they discovered huge industrial metal drums, inside of which long tubes extended deeper underground. These machines resembled old industrial washers, 
but certain peculiarities, such as metallic layers with conical protrusions inside the tubes, suggested they could have been crushers. Moreover, both inside and outside them, traces of the same petrified bodies soaked in the black mass were found. From the central office in Bucharest, it was determined that the last messages had been sent nearly three hours ago. The last one referring to a semi-cavernous area where strange creatures resembling giant insects were photographed roaming in different rooms. When the emergency team descended through the cabin tunnel, they noticed that the main entrance was covered with an extremely hard and pulsating mass blocking the way. Down there with various instruments, it was determined that possibly on the other side of this blocking mass, oxygen levels had dropped to almost zero. It was impossible for the scientists who were there to have exited or survived. Additionally, the cable connecting the main rooms to the surface had unexpectedly fused with fungal masses and the inexplicable black corrosion. In 1971, President Sorchescu received the International Delegation for the Development of Science at the Palace of the Republic. The guests who have been accommodated at the People's Hotel have come from all corners of the world, primarily from the Soviet Union, India, and the People's Republic of China. Sorchescu's leadership projects will be essential for the development and cooperation among communist bloc. Highlighting the great popular tunnel that will seek to connect Bucharest, Chiang and Moscow. This will also be an important center for science development and testing of new weaponry, as well as production of substances for duplication in food, livestock consumption, and bioengineering. President Soshescu himself has overseen the plans and projections of this megastructure, which aims to be operational in less than 10 years a true feat of the Eastern Bloc from which any American assistance will be dispensed with, thus achieving the long-awaited independence and self-sustainability of proletarian effort. Oh, shit. That was... Oh, shit. Europe 
친구들을 기억하면서 우리의 프롤레타리아 블록을 통합하는 데 동료 소체주의 노력을 강조해야 할 것입니다. 주체 모델과 공산주의의 성공은 노동력만큼 중요합니다. 이것이 본질적으로 엔진이고 처음의 힘입니다. 하지만 대표자들의 올바른 관리와 리더십도 중요합니다. 오늘 루마니아는 우리 소비에트 형제들과 점점 가까워지고 있습니다. 두 개의 형제 마을을 연결하는 거대한 터널을 성공적으로 완성하기를 기대합니다. 우리의 동지 정신을 나타내기 위해 나는 우리 국방부에 한국 지식을 제공할 수 있도록 지시했습니다. 우리의 최고 생물공학자 8명으로 구성된 팀이 이미 부코르시트에 도착하여 처체수 동지의 지시 아래에서 안내를 받고 있습니다. 또한 아름다운 바카오 지역의 숲에서 연료로 사용될 수 있는 물질이 발전되었다고 합니다. 이것은 석유와 유사한 외관을 가졌지만 이전에 본 적이 없는 특성을 가지고 있습니다. 우리의 생물공학자들의 존재는 국가에너지 기업의 국내 발전에도 도움이 될 것입니다. 자, 소체투 동지는 개인적으로 연구가 크게 진행되고 있다고 말했습니다. 새로운 에너지원은 더 효율적이며 자유지는 덕분에 더 많은 프로세스에 유용하게 사용되고 있습니다. 동지들, 이것은 공산주의 과학을 위한 거대한 한걸음입니다. 
bearing a striking resemblance to the supposed petrified bodies covered in the black substance found in the tunnels of the facilities. It is worth noting that these forms also emitted an intense odor of burnt plastic and organic waste. Preliminary conclusions have indicated that after the initial intervention, this plague, upon coming into contact with organic material from living humans, has begun to proliferate. This is mainly evidenced by the unmistakable proof that those rigid figures that appeared on the surface share the same features as some of the scientists who did not survive. It is suspected that this mass has infected much of the forest and has begun to expel from the underground much of what lay dormant in the abandoned facilities. This would explain the strange structures that have appeared directly from the muddy terrain. Likewise, as suspected, the first section that was uncovered after the initial expedition also began to be invaded by the dark mucosities from within, and bulbous appendages started to proliferate in long columns within the corridors. Although the first section was completely covered, leaving no possibility for any leakage, the biological structures that began to form exhibited a certain reactivity to certain stimuli, such as the emission of carbon dioxide, as well as to slight contact with study tools. As also identified on the surface, within the forest interior, the bodies of some of the trapped scientists were also recognized in the strange forms that proliferated from cracks in the ground and on the walls. Certain protrusions were identified that amalgamated with the visceral material. This initial approach to the consequences of the discovery investigation has allowed us to understand the disaster that was not containable. And a call is made to the competent bodies of NATO for an urgent intervention of their academic and laboratory entities in order to definitively bury this nature's accident. Furthermore, with the future intervention, a comprehensive sampling will be requested within a period of no more than six months, which is the deadline before the nuclear organism of this phenomenon penetrates the ground and directly contaminates the surface. Oh, shit. In the world, many times events occur, some of which genuinely can be called into question, questioning their truthfulness. However, and despite the fact that these events may not have happened exactly as they are told many times, there is always a kernel of truth that makes the stories objects of interest and sometimes fear and unease. Just as it happened a few weeks ago, another subscriber wrote to me via email, telling me a story related to the first video I uploaded on my channel. The information and images they showed me were frankly disturbing. Dear Anomaly, this is Iona writing to you from Romania. I watched one of your TikTok videos in June of 2023. I remembered that back then you didn't even have a YouTube channel, but your videos quickly went viral on social media. I know that many people thought the video was fake, that the photos were doctored, or that it never happened anywhere in the world. And even if the story is actually false, I can testify and be a reliable witness to something that happened to me and my mother in Bacau, the city where we are from and where the story of the underground facilities also took place. Let me tell you everything from the beginning. My family had to endure the disaster of Ceausescu's government. The geopolitical context was harsh, and like any authoritarian regime, it forces you to live in fear and some paranoia. That's why, for supposed security, my parents and my late grandparents had the idea of creating a bunker in our basement. The idea was quite secretly repudiated by our neighbors, who knew that the paranoia of then-Albanian President Enver Hasha had inspired his followers even outside his country. And my grandfather, of Albanian descent, was one of them. Back then, I hadn't even been born yet. But my parents told me that my grandfather, while he was alive, forced them to stay in the bunker for more than one night out of fear of a foreign attack. It was becoming evident that he had a mental problem. But at the time, you did what the family patriarch said. 
Interestingly, my grandfather died the same year I was born, and the same year Sochesky was executed here in Romania. Since then, my parents decided to dismantle almost the entire bunker, turning it into an ordinary basement to store junk, furniture, boxes, and old beds, until we had a plague of rats and cockroaches, but a very terrible one where a pest control agent recommended us to completely close the space, seal it, and never use it again. That's how the few memories I have of my childhood are vague images of a descending staircase that I rarely saw when the basement door was left open. However, over time they even sealed the door and it became just another wall of the house. It wasn't until last year that, after watching your video on TikTok and following you on YouTube, I remembered the basement and felt curious to see how it had turned out after so many years. There probably weren't any more rats because that problem had been solved for over 30 years, and I never heard rat noises or tiny movements under my feet. It's at this point that I need you to pay attention to the photographs I'm attaching. When we decided to reopen the basement, we had to break part of the wall where it had been sealed. You won't believe that when we created that first hole, a very intense smell of burnt plastic emanated from there. In the house, we thought it might be the smell of decomposing animals because of the rats and all that. But then we found out it wasn't. Upon opening the entire area, we came across the stairs leading to the basement. Down there, everything was so cold and the smell of plastic was nauseating. But it wasn't actually that which shocked us the most, but rather the fact that it seemed like the basement had collapsed. According to my mother, it was now larger, but much dirtier and filled with a strange, deep black mold. The basement was so strange, my mother was surprised because it wasn't the way she originally remembered it. It felt like being inside a cave. In one corner, there was a sort of pool of transparent liquid, very crystalline, from where you could see a huge tunnel descending probably several tens of meters. As minutes passed, we noticed that there were many black masses on the floor down there that we didn't dare touch, but they looked so much like what you showed in your video. The strangest thing, and what ultimately made me think that your investigation was accurate, was when I found a kind of petrified hand covered in this particular and shiny mold. It reminded me of that human figure in the Soviet facilities. I don't know if this could be related, but the similarities are striking, and above all, it happened here in Bacau. Perhaps you have more information about what happened with the discovery of the secret tunnels, but we decided to call one of the neighbors, who usually fixes things for us in the house, and asked him to seal the entrance to the underground again. We didn't want to touch anything else, and only took the photographs that I sent you. I hope this evidence is useful for one of your videos. Unfortunately, the conclusions and subsequent investigations into the Soviet facilities are very vague and even contradictory. This is because there are, in fact, two reports about what happened after communication was lost with the scientific military team that descended into the underground. Furthermore, since their identities are protected, 
it is also impossible to confirm whether they really died when they were attacked by the swarm of strange insects. The reports mention that the creatures devastated the scientific tents, killed all the men, and tried to surface, but perished there upon direct contact with the nitrogen in the air, in addition to being liquidated by the military. On the other hand, the second report addresses the possibility that the last photographs were digital fabrications and that the real discovery was more tunnels connecting to secret laboratories that were still active and operational in Moldova. This is also where some political criminals from Ceausescu's regime are said to have hidden. If you'd like early access to my YouTube videos, you can support me with just $5 on Patreon. There, you'll also have access to some exclusive videos. Additionally, you can purchase channel merchandise on my Etsy store. Please visit and take a look. I would greatly appreciate it if you could comment, leave a like, and help spread the word about the channel to expand our community. Yeah, that was pretty good, brother. Thank you very much. That was a good one. I was very drawn into it, uh, and, and uh, I like the story. Yeah, that was cool. Um, all right. Uh, all right, so, okay, well, um, let's go to... So, uh, if you like uh, Anomaly's work, uh, go support him. He's got a lot of stuff. And if you like what I do, please like, subscribe, follow, share, all that kind of good stuff. It really helps me out. Uh, be safe. Be happy. Be healthy. I love you all. And I'll see you in the next one.